center. So in day two, what have we planned actually? What have we planned? Okay. So this is what we're going to look into because uh, if you see a couple of tutorials out there, they jump straight by, you know, taking you to Python IDEs. And many developers or many YouTubers prefer to use what? PyCharm. Okay. So we will look into them, but I'm going to dedicate a session on what? Overview or overview of what? Python IDEs, trying to compare most of the IDEs, okay? That will happen maybe next week, okay? I, because, and uh, again, how you are kind of customize these IDEs. So I will just touch briefly on them today and then we dedicate another um, session for that. Something that struck me while I was discussing with a colleague, actually, um, she pointed this out that, you know, many students don't have PCs. Hence, it would be better if we kind of highlight something, you know, you know, give them uh, alternatives, okay? Uh, so today we'll be looking into this as well and uh, in paying closer attention, you know, to this collab by Google, Google Collaborator or whatever, okay? So, and uh, that means you can actually run your program on the fly, you know, take it wherever you are. But still, if really you want to do real uh, core development stuff, you need to have a laptop, fine? And we, I don't know maybe whether some of you have seen this raw input. So I'm going to throw light briefly on it, okay? And why input is preferred. And then we try to do simple calculation by using Python as a calculator. So we might keep it only to what? Uh, arithmetic operations, right? Okay? So maybe we look at only arithmetic operators, fine. Now, um, we look at data types, uh, maybe with emphasis on strings today, because I might not be able to cover to post list, dictionaries, arrays, and everything in just today's class. Next, we'll be looking into strings. Uh, I mean, yes, strings with creation, concatenation, and especially slicing, okay? And um, yes, uh, try to do some coding exercises, okay? Some hands-on, all right? So, and some exercises on um, variables, okay? Especially this concept of swapping numbers, okay? Without dot variable and using a dot variable. And I'll tell you why this actually is of an interest, all right? And then we get into some assignments before we conclude, which I'm gonna explain briefly. So we might not be able to touch all this, okay? Using, actually using scenario operators, but you have to do that and get back before we start tomorrow. I mean, get back to us tomorrow, okay? So having said that, uh, the obvious question is this. You see, people will ask, which language is better? Which should I learn pre-Python? Okay, some people say it's Python, okay? Should I learn Python or should I learn Java? Okay, and then should I learn what exactly? What should I learn exactly? So, um, uh, you know, if you have this doubt, uh, I would prefer you learn both, okay? So usually there is this acronym called JITON, meaning Java and Python, right? Combination of these two. So after learning this, you'll be able to choose which one suits you. And please remember, if you are still uh, at bay, you don't know what language to start with, please start with Python. Very, very easy. You will thank me later, okay? So since you have decided on starting with Python, yesterday we looked into the Python prompt, the Python IDE and the Python. Um, okay, one minute. Uh, somebody said something that live streaming is not available. Okay, one minute. Uh, let me just end. Let me minimize this. I don't know why it's not happening. Uh, it's available actually. Uh, please, I, I hope you can see the live streaming, right? Okay. Uh, please, can somebody just confirm while I'm looking at it here? Uh, live streaming is available, yes? Okay. Okay, uh, it's available, please. I'm going to continue. I can see it from my end. Okay, and please, when I ask questions, please, I really want somebody, you know, to kind of respond, okay? Because I don't want to be changing this, all right? So, uh, this was where we are. I uh, please can I don't want to take your names please can you just tell me if the live streaming is still up there please can you just tell, tell me I really want to be sure message me on my whatsapp number please all right so since you have decided that we are going to python it okay then we have to think of which ID to choose all right so having said that we now going to narrow down to what by charm 
usually what interests me is I use uh, PyCharm and then Jupyter Notebook via Anaconda. Okay, so uh, I will show you some of the stuff and majority of them I have used actually. I have used Visual Studio Code, uh, Sublime Text I used, uh, Vim, I have not used this, but yes, I use this once in a while. Okay, and Eclipse, uh, I have not some, uh, yeah, Eclipse I use it mostly for my Java program. Okay, so PyDev I have not looked into. All right, so having said that, uh, let's start installation. Okay, so we will look into the mobile IDEs, and then um, one of the things I want you to pay attention to is uh, Collab. Okay, Google Collab, because this is uh, your word, Jupyter Notebook on the cloud. Jupyter Notebook on the cloud. Okay, so here you don't need to on the cloud, you don't need to install anything, right. And uh, I prefer, you know, using this when we get into advanced or advanced concepts, especially in machine learning and uh, medical image analysis. But for now, we, uh, I think we are good to go. Let's just start. All right. So I'm heading over to my browser now and let's start the installation process. So remember uh, what we said, right? So we are going to look into what now? The installation. So let's do something now. Tell me what you know, PyCharm, right? So PyCharm is what we know now. Now you just type PyCharm and try to, don't be in a hurry to just go or download. Okay, this is one of the habits I want most of the students to cultivate, okay? Even for developers, you know for sure uh, as a data scientist or maybe a data analyst or even a data engineer, irrespective of, or DevOps engineer, irrespective of your path, uh, which you have told, you really need to read extensively. So before you download anything, please just take a while to read. You know, do the go through. The, I mean, go through their documentation. You can see some of them from Wikipedia. If you are not okay with that, also open this in a new tab. Just read it before you download. So you see, my download is already greater out because I have visited it prior. But you see, Python is an IDE used in computer programming specifically for Python. Yes, developed by the Czech company JetBrain. Okay, now I don't know if I'm presenting this properly, but we call it like that. Okay, okay. So, and please, uh, I need also your constructive criticisms after the class, right? If I go too fast, please let me know. If I'm too slow, please let me know. All right, so now we have seen this. Okay, so we need to download this. Now, there will be two flavors here either we download this for professional edition or we get the words, the community edition. So, if you see here, you might not get uh what you might not get uh that uh what you call it uh the uh, community edition so you might try this out actually so if i click on dc this is full-fledged okay professional or community edition both of them are here so if i click on download all right now i should have this option okay so on windows which i believe many of you are using that just ensure that this is highlighted windows mac or linux so i believe majority of us will be using windows and very few of us will be on mac Oh, sorry, Linux. So if you're on Linux, obviously you can go with, always go with community edition, unless you are working on enterprise applications or your company can actually purchase it, all right? Or you can still try it out, actually. I think you'll be getting some days trial, maybe two weeks or one month, I'm not sure. So let's go and get this downloaded right away. So I've come here and um, yes, I one thing that interests me most is, you see here you have this for scientific and web, development but i want to get the community edition i click on the download button and you just wait so voila is getting downloaded so this is one of them okay and we know definitely this is meant for that let's look at another one right so the other one is what can you tell me so look here you go back which ide so we have visual studio code we have sublime test and we have jupyter notebook okay let me go straight to my jupyter notebook so one of the best ways to download this is because i have seen students okay jupyter notebook they will just go and type this alone okay jupyter notebook now i'll tell you you see you can actually download jupyter notebook like this okay but again read this quickly fine and then this and that and things like that but the best way to avoid running into issues later okay to avoid running into issues later download anaconda 
okay so now you might say sir okay we need this why not get the jupyter notebook that is fine now anaconda will give you that you know flexibility to create uh virtual environments to even you know uh kind of even uh, use the anaconda uh, the jupyter lab and you can do you know high level configurations on your system as well okay and you won't bother about which package which release and or whatnot okay so i don't need to sign in i have my email id and stuff but i can just click on this button download right and one of the beauty parts, you will see it as we download and install this together. You see, you not only have Jupyter Notebook, you even have Visual Studio Code. Go back here. You see your Visual Studio will be there. You can even, you have access to, and one which they didn't mention here, Spider, and other IDEs also, including PyCharm. So all together as a bundle. So view this Anaconda as your office suit. In your Microsoft Office suite, you have your what? Your Excel, your PowerPoint, your Page Maker, your Publisher, your Infographics, your everything, right? So view it like that. Okay. By the way, Anaconda is a bigger Python version of Python. Let's take it that way, right? So it's the mother of all the Pythons. Okay. In Hindi, they say it's the ama of all of them. So this is done, and then I need to download Anaconda, right? So you can see here for Windows, this is the latest version, 64-bit graphic, whatever. Again, you, you are free to change your OS, right? So Linux, Mac, and Windows. So by default, Windows is selected. So now, this is optional, okay? I have it already, but if you feel like you can actually uh, log in, you are going to learn some stuff here. So why don't I show you? So if you can actually see what, of, what they have, right? So you can see all the Anaconda products, all right? So you see many of them, okay, for commercial edition, for team edition, for enterprise edition. Can you see that? So if really you want to use them for, let's say, ML operations, okay, and things like that, dedicated package deposit for data science teams, are starting at $10,000 and things like this. So you might actually get in touch with them, okay? So yeah, having said that, um, let's just continue. Now you see, uh, I didn't want to waste time installing all the other stuff. That's why I have chosen Anaconda. So let's start with Anaconda and then I will show you. First, I will start with uh, PyCharm and then I'll cancel it in between and I'll tell you why. Now you see here, uh, let's open this and uh, I'm going to close this. This is done. That is also done. This is also done. Fine. I'm using my email ID. Fine. And uh, yes. Discard this. So uh, as it continues, from this and things like that okay let's continue now we click on next i have it already but again for the purpose of this tutorial i'm going to replicate the same thing so you see uninstall silently right settings and configurations of old systems will be deleted and things like that so but since i have some projects that are working on this i can actually uh, override this okay i don't want to remove this right okay so uninstall this so this will not be deleted i beg your pardon Okay, it won't be deleted. All the configuration and things I've set on that won't be deleted. So follow the on-screen information. So next, uh, I think this might take a couple of times. So why that happens, let's continue with the tutorial. All right. Uh, yeah. Okay. And it says it requires this space and things like that. So next, next, next. So now what you should do is this. Ensure you do this. Okay. It says restarts are needed. So I'm not going to do this because I'm on a live uh, um uh, streaming so i'm not going to do this so because of this i'm going to cancel this please ensure when you are doing this installation add this to the part and i explained why we have to add this to part uh in yesterday's uh, lecture i mean the previous lecture depending on the time you are watching this tutorial so that is done once that is done you can just check whether it's installed by typing pie chart, right so if you see that that is it and then it might open some of the projects which i have now let's see over and um, Let's head over and uh, install um, install what now? Oh, okay. I think because I removed that, I have to reinstall this again. Okay. So no problem. I will reinstall this again. So let's end this here for now. And uh, I hope it didn't affect my Anaconda. So let's install Anaconda. I'm just going to prototype it. I will not complete the installation here. So remember, it's inside downloads folder, and then I have this fine. So as that starts. Um, uh installing so you let me see i hope you shouldn't uh, ask prompt for it uh, for a start if it's prompts i will kind kindly ignore that so you continue uh next next now so usually i it, it's up to you if you want for only you as a user or you want everyone that uses the system to have access to it maybe you can just enable this fine but for now this is fine for me i'll go to next and i'll go to next and i'll go to that obviously register this to the path okay and then you have to check this as well Okay, it will prompt you that it's not recommended. 
please add that to file okay then that is done let me see if this thing's messed up my environment for now so i'm going to type a anaconda okay i want to show you something and you're going to see anaconda navigator uh okay hopefully it's working so i'm going to open this and i'm going to show you something now okay let it start to open with your default uh web browser okay so in this case if i'm using this it might open with that uh so that's it loads let's just continue with the class now see here remind me later okay now did you see um i'll be having a couple of things here which you may not understand for now so these are called my virtual environments okay and which i actually created for you you have only base after you install that which you actually see by you can actually create it i'm going to show you how to create this using the gui or uh, i prefer running it from my anaconda prompt okay which is the kind of my cli okay but if you see here, um, one thing that interests me, let's go back to home. Did you see uh, data, whatever data law is actually there? Yeah, so did you see PyCharm is, you know, is, is actually uh, pre-installed, okay? So the template is there. So what I can do is I'll click on install. It will install PyCharm here. Now, did you see Visual Studio Code? I can click on launch because I have installed it previously, right? Now, it's, it's John's launch. So you will see the two differences here on this button. Launch says launch. Uh, what a pre-installed uh, package now if it's not there you have to install it and did you see here jupyter notebook is there uh, powershell is there jupyter lab is also there spider is there pycharm professional edition is like even there and you know uh, VR studio is also there by the way jupyter stands for julia python and r okay so now let's launch this um so you can actually install the other one and that's it so for now, I'm not going to use all these things in this, I mean, all these IDEs in this lecture, okay, until we proceed. So what you can do, maybe you wanted to give this on the desktop and we have 100 days of challenge and we have some of the programs. And then if you check, you will not be getting these NP extensions, okay? So you have only files running IPython clusters and notebook extensions. So you won't have this. So I'm going to tell you also, that's why I'm reserving uh, this, uh, another class just for customizing all these, your notebook extensions, uh, sorry, Jupyter Notebook, and even customizing your uh, PyCharm IDEs and Visual Studio IDE. So, so, I mean, here you will not get that, and let's just leave it here for now. How do you start? I you can just click on file new, sorry, new, you say Python 3, and um, here, Python 3, then here we can actually print. You remember we printed Hello World, right, yesterday. So you can actually print the same thing. You just say print, okay? So you just put it there. We know it's a string. So you just type again, Hello World, no problem, right? Then that's it. And how do you, again, I don't want to start looking into this. So for now, you can just click and run, okay? Or you just press Control Enter. Sorry, uh, Shift Enter. So if you press Shift Enter, it will run that and then drop it and transfer the control to the next line, right? So that was what I did. So you can actually do the same thing by just right uh, selecting the whole thing and just clicking and run. Okay, fine. And once it is executed, you see a number will be assigned to that, right? And if it is busy, it will be start. So I'm going to close this now. This is not what I wanted. Now let's look into what mobile uh, compilers. Okay, so uh, you uh, you don't have a laptop fine and i don't want you to keep waiting till you get a laptop so what do you do okay so you let's take help from google because i have not done this before so we look for what mobile what do you call it um mobile uh, compilers okay okay for okay sorry compiler for pi for mobile whatever python python compilers Python IDE for mobile phones, okay? So you might just check that, and then you see if you have a mobile phone, it will take you to Play Store, okay? Especially for Windows users. Or you can actually check this, okay? So here, you see this from uh, Pi3, I think, I, 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 I see education. Now, uh, one thing that, you know, I'm conscious of is this. I always read the comments. Best, best mobile IDE on the market with features to die for like volume control, whatever. But I'm not pretty sure about this, but look at the negative comments also. The worst update in PyDroid, whatever history and things like that, please fix it. Now, uh, feel, feel free to go through, see this then Python, whatever, then this and things. You get lots of mobile IDEs, okay, out there. I believe also maybe this one also might be there, okay? So learn Python programming and things like that. You have to install it on your PC. It's called Easy Coder, okay, by Easy Coder. Excellent app, five star, and I request that full project should be attached to the, you know, things like this, fine. Now, uh, so once this is done, uh, I then you might 
you might end up not getting actually a proper IDE, so you need to toggle here and there to find what works best. But the best bet is for you to use what your Google Colab. So uh, you need to for that you need to have an email ID, obviously Google email ID, and you just type Colab. It's actually collab.research.google.com. But once you type that, because I use it frequently, you see the URL pops up there. Now here. Um, you don't need to install anything, okay? And you can actually do this from the comfort of your home, also even from your notebook, right? So you might not get recent, you might get examples, okay? So let me just cancel this now. Let me just cancel this. So usually it would leave, leave you at examples. And you see here, notebook, okay? So notebook is just similar to the concept of your what? Jupyter notebook. So that's why it's called Jupyter notebook that runs on the web, okay? Now, this is what we have. And I'm going to... Now, I'm not going to click on notebook for now, okay? But once you click on new notebook, you're going to get a new notebook. Just leave it. And I always explore, please. So what is collaboratory or Google Colab for short? Allows you to write and execute Python in your browser. With what? Zero com. Let me just zoom this out a bit. Sorry, please. So you see, with what? Zero configuration required. Free access to GPUs and easy sharing. So you see, whether you're a student, a data scientist, or an AI researcher, Colab makes your work easier. Watch intro. So what I want you to build, you know, the skills I want most of you to build now is, please don't just download. Try to read a little thing about everything, okay, before you start. And even for data science, they've given you insight. Can you imagine cool visualizations, right? Yeah, you can add some for machine learning. This we are going to touch, you know, as the class proceeds. So you see, it becomes pretty easy. Here they have used this to calculate what? The what seconds in a day, right? So 60 seconds into 60 minutes into 24 hours, right? So this is how much seconds you have in a day. So you see, pretty easy. Now, if you really want to explore, maybe you just go and say file and say new notebook, right? And uh, this will be saved in your Google Drive itself, okay? So I will not be showing mine because I have some sensitive information there. So here, um, as this opens again, the only demerit here is it is dependent on your internet speed. So you can see here you can change it. You can give it a name. Instead of saying on type 9, I can say day 2, okay, of 100, of 100. And did you notice one thing here? It comes at IPY. It comes with the extension IPYMB. That is Interactive Python Notebook, right? And let's look at what they said we have actually. Let me print something. I'll just say print. Okay, I'll just say uh, hello. Anything. Our hello world will be there. Fine. I'll just say hello africa okay fine now once you do this all right and i press sorry i press shift enter okay and then you see it will try to execute what i said the only demerit here is it depends on the speed of your internet i mean disadvantage okay if you have a very low internet then it's not i mean it will take little time now this pops up and you see time it took to execute zero seconds but let's go and now check what actually they said about gpus and stuff so you go to runtime actually you can see how much space is actually utilizing okay by connecting to a hosted uh, hosted runtime or connecting to a local runtime but first thing let's do a look at this runtime okay now please always follow the shortcut say control f9 to run all control f8 to run before to run this and focus and things like that now go and click on um, uh, change runtime type by default the accelerator is not meaning you are not using gpu you're neither using gpu nor not tpu rather you're using cpu i am not sure if they have the concept of cpu but see here click the drop down arrow you're going to get this by the way gpu stands for graphics processing unit right so you see most most uh high-end laptops we have this and tpu is your tensor processing unit now feel free now let's explore both of them now if i use this now i'll save you see here pay closer attention to this allocating right then it to be done now this you have to check you must check it especially if you are working with what if you are dealing with something on what image processing or computer graphics now see here once i come now here and just point i'm not clicking anywhere you see they're connected to google tree whatever and i have this much of space right okay it's almost 13 gb space okay and then that is my uh hard disk space right and then I have this much space again also, around 78 something. And you see, Compute Engine is using this robot GPU. Now, let's change this now from GPU to a TPU. I'm going to change my runtime again to what? From GPU to a TPU, tensor processing. And you see now. 
So this actually should enable me to do multi or they call, they call it uh, parallel computing at a faster rate, right? Because you know the concept of tensor here is not going to reside on a local uh, rack, rather right? it will be distributed along racks in the data center, Google data center. So again, you point here, you got to ensure that you are actually connected to that. Again, you see you are connected to now what? The TPU, fine. So this is a quick overview of this and after this now let's do some real stuff okay let's do some coding so so far we have um looked into what happened yesterday and then explored a couple of ides and things like that so we want to get started again coding okay so a quick recap uh remember yesterday we used this idea so i'm going to start with that again so and then i want to use python 10 okay permit when i say python 10 i mean python 3.10 python 10 fine let it cover my entire screen and remember we said now uh, instead of viewing this as an ordinary interpreter i'm going to use a, a compiler right so i press ctrl n and i'm free to close this no problem when i run that it will pop up again so let's look at the first program what was the first program actually i said before we proceed i need to address this right what do i want to address input versus raw input so let's try to understand the difference between both of them uh go back here and um uh, the thing is that I the, the reason here is uh, I said it actually somewhere here, okay? Input versus raw input. Don't think so much, okay? Just look at this. Input, the raw input was in older version of Python, like Python 2, okay? But with Python 3 uh, comes to your what input. And they basically do the same thing. What does it, what does it, have, does it help you to do? To take input from the user. And we saw this yesterday, right? So most of the input you to take will be in a string format. If you want to print something, they say you want to perform addition, you have to typecast whatever number is inside there into what a numeric or an integer type fine now and then the raw input is mostly for maybe like applications that you know are uh, they develop prior to you know some developers don't want to maybe they might not know that uh, yeah inputs can also do the same thing as raw input so don't think so much about this they are all the same thing okay now keeping this in mind uh let's go and look into some stuff okay uh let's use this uh use our python as to perform simple calculations right so what are we going to do now we look at the concepts of numbers so if you see here, uh, maybe uh, to make sure that this is actually working perfectly, I'm going to go back to my IDLE, okay? And then let's start from here. Uh, so using this as a, a calculator, what can I do? Let's start with basic arithmetic, okay? I want you to have the feed that you can actually program. What is 2 plus 5? Yay, 7. Once you press enter, it happens. It runs. I don't need to press F5. I don't need to go and click and run things like that. No problem. So can we try doing something that involves board mass? You still remember board mass, right? Brackets of division, multiplication, addition, and subtraction. But another one exists. I yeah, it's called PEM mass or PEM dasin or PEM 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 whatever PEM das or whatever. Just parenthesis, exponentiation, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, and then you get your integer division. No problem. And we look into the difference between two things now. That is this versus what? Which one? You know what I'm talking about versus that. So this one with double slash is called your floor division. And this is not your normal division, okay? So let's try to use most of them here, okay? And by the way, remember what this is? Aha, uh -huh. so it's not percentage sign, by the way, okay? This is what uh, a modulus operator, fine? So what does modulus do? We're going to see that again. It returns the remainder after division, fine. So let's continue. Now let's do some stuff. Let's say 60. Uh, I, and I would request you to, you know, take down notes and try to evaluate this to see if we are going to get the same thing or not. What do you think this will evaluate to maybe like 5 times 7? Oh, by the way, this times 7, okay, it is multiplication. But whenever you get this, this is what? Exponentiation or raised to power. Double star or double asterisk is exponentiation or raised to power. Now, what did you see? Are you sure this evaluated properly? Why don't you check? So it followed the order, right? Though there were no, uh, what do you call it? There were no braces. It knew that I should perform multiplication, right? Before subtracting. Hence, it's trying to follow the rule of board mass. Okay. Let's try to add bra braces now, okay? So I'm going to say maybe like I say 60 minus, I don't know why I like this number. Okay, maybe 4, 5. Um, mm, why am I using 5? Maybe 4, uh, four uh, into, uh, okay, 4 into 3. Then I'll say divided by uh, 5. Okay, what do you think this will give? 
Can you perform this uh, uh, computation quickly and tell me what it will give? So um, what would be the order actually? It has to do whatever is in the brackets first, okay? And then coming here, it again has to check what is what, uh, which order, bracket, okay, fine, I have to do multiplication. So I'm gonna get 12, take away 12 from 60, I'm gonna get what? I'm gonna get what, 48, okay? If I divide 48 by five, oh, okay, let me divide it by something, okay, by four, all right? So if I divide 48 by four, I'm gonna get 12, okay? Mm -hmm. Let's see, so I'm gonna get 12. But did you notice something here? It gave me 12.0. All right, so uh, by default, this will return what a decimal, which we call the floating point equivalent. All right, so um, this is what we have. But let's say uh, I really don't want this decimal to be returned. So uh, let's try something here and see. Uh, oh, okay, okay, 12.0. Uh, let's try something here and see. I'm going to repeat the same thing again. Okay, does it support Control C, Control V? I it should support actually. So um, okay, now. When I do this and then change this to uh, floor division, what did this get now? So I'm getting 12. So what happens here is it will not, it, whatever comes after the decimal is not going to consider it. Now you might say, okay, sir, hey, that way zero, we don't even bother, right? So I'm going to repeat the same thing now and divide it by five. So with ordinary division, I'm going to divide this by five. And what did I get? 9.6. Now look here. If you have 9.6 lakhs, would you want to truncate the 6 lakhs? What is 6 lakhs here? 60,000, right? But if you had 12 lakhs, 12.0 lakhs, that means 12 lakhs, 0 rupees, right? So even if I truncate that, I mean, even if I delete the dot, whatever, okay, dot 0, whatever, you won't bother. Now you have 9.6 lakhs, 9 lakhs, 60,000. Would you want me to do this? I don't think so. Would you want me to do this? I mean, dividing this by what? We divided by five, right? Dividing this by five, would you allow me to do that? Getting only nine. So where has my 60,000 gone? So this is what we should understand, okay? And the, what, what maybe the use cases here? Let's say I want the user maybe like just to enter only, I mean, I want the final output, right? Just to be a whole, no, aha, uh -huh, a whole number, okay? In this case. So I want only, um, I don't want this, um, what do you call it? I don't want the decimal number. Then I can use this, okay? So quickly, let's look at modulus operator, right? So I said, uh, before we do that, I want you to answer this question simply. What is five mod two? Can you go to the chat box and tell me what it is? So if I divide five by two, what is the remainder? One, good. What is two mod five? Any idea? What will it be? Will it be zero? Will it be two? Will it be what? Okay, I won't tell you. Tell the answer. Okay, fine, you guessed it right. So if it is two, then what happened here? Since five cannot divide two, right? So obviously two becomes the remainder, right? And that's it, fine. So we have seen this and another thing I want you to do is, uh, let's look into what now, exponentiation. Now, usually I ask people, what is two into five? This is two into five, which is 10, no doubt. But what is two? Into, into 5. <laughs> okay, that's how some people pronounce it. But anyway, it is 2 raised to power 5. It is not going to be 2 into into 5, which is 10. It's going to, it's going to give me what? 32 now. So 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 into 2, which is 32. Fine. So with this, now you got this concept. But remember yesterday, we looked at something we can use. Now, did you notice the problem here? All this stuff, like you see, when I copy this, I have to go and paste them again, right? Who does this? Instead, why can't I assign them? I store it locally. I'm going to store it in a place called maybe like a... You've, saw, you've seen we did this yesterday, right? So when I run this now, okay, what do you think will happen? Nothing happened, right? Are you following? Nothing happened because I have taken the entire value and I have hidden it in a place called A. So if I want to get the value now, I'll just press A, type A and press enter. Now it is back. So this is called a variable. And remember the concept of a variable is just like a container. So uh, one minute is a container that, con that holds a value. So that value only will be there until you call the variable, right? Fine. Now, if that means that if that is making sense, um, I'm going to open something quickly now and let's continue doing something. So you see, um, 
I thought of uh, keeping the notes also, which I will share uh, on GitHub at the end of it all. Okay, so here are the one uh, we looked at, we didn't write anything. So let's continue with this on day two. Okay, so day two of 100. Now, visualize this variable. Okay, and let's do something in the context of this variable. I want you to calculate the area of something. So what is actually the area, right? So you have a plot of land. Uh -huh. So in India, I know many people, they are so conscious about land ancestral property. The plot of land is this way. And then it measures, they say it is 100 by 20. If it is 100 by 30, now, how do you calculate the area of this plot? Can anybody tell me? So how do you calculate the area? Don't use formula. So you say area is what? Is it distance around this or what? So if you visualize this, what exactly we are actually asking is, what is this, right? This, this is the area, right? That much space is taken. So how do you do that? So you say it is what? 100 into what? 30. Now there will be a problem here. What if I have other plots which I want to calculate, right? Again, I have to keep typing 130 by 100, whatever, whatever. So because of that now, I'm going to say A, let A be area and let L be length and let B be breadth. So this, I'm now saying it is L and this is B. Now with this, I have calculated the area of my plot to be what? Uh -huh. What is it now? 3,000 square feet, right? Anything or square, whatever, feet, anything. Now, with this, now I can actually calculate the perimeter, right? So area is done. Let's look at the perimeter. So perimeter says it is what? Distance around it, right? So what would be the distance? Think that somebody is standing here, okay? Okay, one Chota brother is standing here. So he wants to walk around this plot. So he moves up, he walks here. Once he's here, he has covered 100 feet. Here, he's covered 130 feet. Here, he walks back, he's covered 230 feet. And finally, he's gone back to the stuff. He's covered 260 feet. So what is the perimeter now? Now we have used the con another concept, the uh, variable P equal what? I cannot say L plus B plus L plus B. No problem. But can I may simplify this by saying, how many L's are there? Two L's. How many B's are there? Two B's. So this is 2L plus 2B, right? Which, is, which translates to 2 into L plus B over... Fine. Now with this, can we now do something now? Okay. I'm going to type it fixing the values of L and B. Same values. Okay. And I want you to ask the user to enter the length and the breadth and you calculate this. So this will be your involvement today. Please don't forget this assignment. Okay. So this will be your homework. Fine. You ask the user, prompt the user to enter, say it should look like this, enter the length of the plot. And please remember to use comments, fine? The program to calculate whatever area, whatever. Enter the length of the plot, of plot, fine. Then the user enters. You say enter the breadth of the plot. The user enters. You now say the perimeter. Okay, meter is blah, blah, blah. And then the area is okay feel free to format it okay fine so i will not do this for you i'm just going to uh, uh type the program i'm going to fix it now okay using l and b as 10 and 30 so quickly let's do this now let's get back here so what we can do now is uh here since we want to run the program at once okay what we can do is we need to do something here let's continue here so we say uh l right l equals what what is l 100 right then enter nothing will happen b equals what 30 nothing happens right so a aha uh -huh, equals what oh by the way equality sign is an assignment operator which does what it takes the value on the right hand side and assigns it to the element on the left so the variable on the left okay the value is assigned to a variable you got the concept now a is equal to what l uh-huh l into what into b fine fine enter now nothing happens so i have to say a print a now i got that right so this is it but remember this is not what i wanted you to do i want you to draw an entire thing here example you can say length now you see the problem here L is good, but L does not make any sense, right? Hence, in the concept of programming, learn to choose variable names that are meaningful. So I can say length, you can say, now, aha, please. 
There's something I said briefly about keywords, right? Once I say learn, it's an inbuilt function, okay? It's a keyword which I cannot use. So, but if I change it to learn by default, okay, you shouldn't use it. So, I have learn is what 100. Now, let me show you something here. What if I just say L, okay, without assigning a value? It will tell me this L is undefined. Now, it will print 100 because I have assigned it. Let me say uh, M. Now, you see the problem here. M is not defined. So, what does this tell you? Undefined means what? I did not assign value to it, okay? M is not defined. So, I need to assign value to it. However, if I say now M is equal to 100, it works, no problem. If I just print M, that is it. Okay, so make sure you have close attention to this while you also work on this assignment. So, you got the concept and then um, I want you to look, look into this, okay? And that, that is the first one. And let's continue. So, why did I tell you this? Yes, try to use something like this. Length equals that and then you can say breadth. That's what I wanted you to do. Equals what? 30. Fine. And then you can now say area equals something. Okay. Now, and then save this. Okay. Because remember here, this was what we highlighted yesterday, right? Though this is there, I can actually save this. But when I open this again, it's going to open as a compiled code. Fine. So here, area is equal to length into breadth. Fine. Like that. Fine. So when you start using... um most of these uh, ideas you will get to know like uh, the, the intelligence will help you understand uh, whether you're making a mistake or not fine so and i'm going to press ctrl s now quickly and then i can save it okay i have a folder on the desktop which i call my 100 days of python i can call this word day uh-huh day two something like that underscore b1 the first program of today now like that now you see uh once i save it uh it should Actually, yeah, it's not showing me anything yet because I have not used print statement, right? I can say print, uh, then yeah, it now changes, okay? Say print area, fine. And you remember that you cannot, you only should print area like this. You should not put the area in single or double quotes, right? Red, if you do this, what will happen? Let's see this, okay? Uh, I don't need to tell you. So it's going to print the word area instead of printing what? Uh, length and breadth. So F5, we run this. Now you see it printed area, but that's not what we wanted. So we wanted the value of this variable. We don't want the variable to be printed. So I just go back here now, and then um, I'm going to run this again. I just press F5. I say, okay, you must save it, and that's it, okay? So this is what happens. Fine. Now, so far, so good. Uh, so what X we have to do? Uh, I want you to think of uh, another program, please. You know about interest formula, right? Okay, so this is another framework. You know about interest. So somebody uh, uh, takes a, uh, gives him, you know, you know about that. So I don't want to talk about tasks and stuff like that. So usually we say, uh, find the interest, which is the amount he has to pay. Okay, please, I don't want to get into maths. Amount is also different from interest, right? Amount is equal to principal plus interest. That is A is equal to principal plus interest. So I don't want to talk about this now. I want you to calculate only interest for now. Obviously, you can actually calculate this, no problem. Yeah, this can be your homework, okay? Amount equals principal plus interest. So what is this interest? Interest, which we call the simple interest for now. I don't want you to look into compound interest is equal to principal into time into rate upon 100. So this can be written as this, right? P, T, R into what? Upon 100 can be written as what? Times what? 0 0.01, right? You can use this, no problem, fine? Uh-huh. Now, you can also do one thing. Uh, you want, remember the time must be in what? Years. The rates must be in percentage. Okay. So if the time of stuff is given maybe like in six months, you have to use what? 0.5, how one by two, which is what? A uh, half a year. Okay. So you just do this. So that means you need to ask the user again to enter the principle. Enter the principle. Okay or the initial, initial amount. I don't know what you call it. I don't want to confuse these uh, account stamps. Enter the principal, okay? And then enter the time in years. Enter the time and then enter the what? Rates, okay? And with this, you should be able to, to do this. If you are not able to do it, we will look into this. By the way, I said I'm going to look into yesterday's program, right? So I believe many of you did the homework, okay? So don't forget these two. Let's look into what yesterday's program. So to uh, save time, I have actually written them and I kept them here. So the first one is uh, you should calculate what uh, you should do what uh, even an odd program generation in Python. So before we do this, okay? Um, 
let's understand uh, what we mean by an even and odd program all right and even an odd number please so quickly what is an even number everybody knows that even number is a number if you divide it by two and the remainder is zero okay it's an even number so we keep that in mind and then all these ones are even numbers till where positive till infinity now what if somebody enters minus two what if someone enters negative four is it even or odd it's still even so where is the range it starts from negative infinity there to what including zero actually what happens when someone enters zero if you divide zero by two what will you get guys have you thought about this if you divide zero by two what are you going to get you're going to get zero so the question is is zero an even or odd number we normally leave out zero but in this case if you don't check this you have to check this okay so you will modify this program i'm giving you now to whenever the user enters a number that is zero you say this is neither an even or odd number okay so there'll be an exception fine and when maybe the user enters negative number so you tell the person i don't want a negative number please i want a positive number for now obviously negative numbers can be even and odd okay so we got the logic if i divide it by two and the remainder is equal to zero so simply enter some number if i divide this number by two if the remainder is equal to zero now i have used another operator right so this operator i'm going to rewrite it here again if this num yes in this case you can say n1 n1 is okay but n1 is not meaningful right so if you better you say num if num if i divide this number by two and the remainder is exactly equal to zero then i can print that it is even now how can you write this what can you say if i divide this num okay and the remainder is not equal to zero right so it is odd fine good so what you can do see this now is what they saw the, they call it exactly equal to meaning it must give me zero right example five is exactly equal to five we return true okay a is exactly equal to a we return false because of the ascii values but if you say a is exactly equal to a it will return true because ascii values this is 97 this is 97 whereas this is 65 i think i'm right and this is 97 so 97 is not equal to 65 fine so this having said this now that is for even and odd let's look at the next program the next one is maximum of two numbers okay and in this there's something else which we'll discuss briefly which is called binary operator but for now let's look at how you do even an odd number okay so uh, sorry um uh, maximum of two numbers please even an odd is over so let's look at maximum of two numbers so what do you say um maximum of two numbers say num one is what let's give values num one is six and num two is is uh, seven so what's the maximum maximum don't use input function actually this is there if you say max of num one command num two it's going to give you what seven no problem we don't want this okay so let's just use if statement yes you might say sir you have not thought about if statement so why are we doing this so let's apply simple logic right so you ask the question is num one greater than num two obviously is seven greater than six or is six greater than seven so you just think of it very simple right if num one you can do this is greater than what num two right colon you just print something what num one is greater fine is greater okay else now do you need to compare no else you say what num2 right fine num2 over done now that is maximum of two numbers what happens when this user enters first case six second case six what do you think will happen here have you thought about that so you need to handle this if num1 now so that means again we are going to look into some stuff tomorrow we will dive into conditional statements no problem but i'm just giving a preamble okay an introductory class into that so you need to say now if i want to compare again i can say else if is not there in else if is not there like else if as a keyword is called elif right in python so elif num1 is exactly so i need to check now whether both are equal num1 is exactly sorry equal to num2 if this holds true then we say both are equal equal okay else we say the other one fine take it so now can you use can you do this now okay and uh, maybe that'll be an assignment also not an assignment i'll run it before we leave another thing we need to look into is what we call tenary operator right so the question is do python support tenary operators java supports it and i don't know about c plus plus i cannot say but java supports tenary operator simply you have question mark colon whatever whatever okay so first condition question mark and then the other one no problem 
But Python supports it also in a different way. We'll look into that uh, maybe as the class proceeds. The last thing I want to touch before we run these programs and wind up for today is what we we'll call what? Uh, very important interview questions for beginners, okay? Swapping, okay? Swapping programs, right? Swapping values. So let's think of something here, okay? I know most of you are very good students. You don't drink, but let's say this, this is a jar. A jar of what? Water, okay? This is a jar of water. And then this is a glass of whatever. Uh, you drink milk, no? Milk. So hot milk, okay? Now this is milk. Now I'm asking this simple question, okay? I want you to take the contents of milk. So this now, we have seen this. So these are variables, right? So this is water variable. Wow, I water, okay? This is milk variable. So think of it as containers that holds quantities of something. This much quantity of water exactly and this much quantity of milk exactly so that you won't say, sir, this is empty and that is not empty, okay? Now, the question is, can you take the content of milk and pour inside this jar of water and take whatever is in this water and pour it into this milk, uh, into, the, into the container, the milk container? So how will you do this? How? Just think practically. So you see, it's impossible because both are filled to the brim. What, the only way you can do this is by introducing another empty bottle. So this empty bottle maybe might be of the same or bigger, okay? So this empty bottle is called my temporary bottle, right? It's going to hold the value of what I don't know temporarily. So what happens now, I'm going to take, I can take it out, right? So I'm taking this water now, I'll pour it inside here. What happens now? This contains water. And what is in the water now? Empty. If it is empty, then I can now take what? I can go and take what is in milk, right? Take what is in milk and pour inside what? Here, right? Fine, because this is empty. Fine. And then you see, after this is done, then this becomes empty, right? Milk becomes empty. Fine. So this will now contain what? Milk. I put it in green now. So this is containing milk. Now, this is empty, okay? What I will do, I will now take back this water, okay? And pour it inside this stuff, right? So such that this will now contain what? Water. I have successfully swapped this, right? And then this becomes empty again, fine? As it was originally. So this is the concept, okay? And you have to implement this program, okay? On your own as an assignment. So I don't want to keep you for so long. I'm really sorry. I have overshot my time. So let's just run this, okay? So this is very simple. So I'm going to copy this now. Very simple, okay? So control C, all right? And then let's get back here, okay? And this is where we, what we have. So I'm going to uh, comment this out. I told you about this yesterday. So you can either use this, okay? Okay? And then, or you can also use single quote also. Close this down. Now I'm going to paste this here, fine? Now I'll just press Control F5, done, or F5, obviously, we run here, enter, fine. It says enter a number, right? So the number of enter is maybe like six. Now it says six is an even number, fine, done. So you can check other conditions. Now we get to loops where we make this program to run a number of times. So make sure that everything is working. So odd, this is odd, done. That is the first program, okay? So let, uh, let's, let me comment this out. So what I'm going to do, I'll take this out from here and then I'll just end it here. And then I'm going to paste the next thing and we wind up for today, okay? So the next is what? So maximum of two numbers, which I know many of you did. So you know the condition, if this is this, then you, and now I use the format, a format, okay? So I'm going to talk about this format later. So what is it actually? Whatever I enter, the value of that is maximum, okay? So you can actually print it without using this format specifier here. No, sorry, format specifier is entirely different place in the concept of Java. So I just formatted it in a readable manner. So here, maximum of two numbers, just press F5, done. Okay, it's fine. Enter a number, I will say, first, sorry, now I cannot say enter a number. I should say enter the first number. I hope you are with me, guys. I say enter a number. I enter the second number, okay? Enter the first number, enter the second number. Obviously, nine is the maximum number. Fine, got it, fine. So on this note, uh, let's do a quick recap of what happened today, okay? And then we wind up. Now let's get back to our um, slides and see what happened. So um, if you remember vividly, uh, 
what we what we, we started by looking into what happened yesterday and things like that and then on today we kind of focus on the overview of this so let's see if we did justice to this or did we miss out anything so follow me as we take this out check this so overview of python id is check okay mobile compilers for this check because we focus only on what collab right collab mostly then taking user inputs obviously check python as a calculator basics check data types unchecked though we have worked on them okay strings creation and whatever unchecked variables we have done okay with these things like that some even odd done maximum of this using if done thin array we did not do fine and assignments homework get involved check so on this note i want to thank you so much for listening and um, i deem it fit to end the show okay. and then i will see you again in tomorrow's lecture but please don't forget that we are on this challenge together Help me to make this worthwhile by staying put and being involved while the lecture goes on. All right. Thank you so much. And um, I will see you tomorrow. Okay. Bye for now.